Welcome to Menopause Moguls Podcast, the Elevation Talk Series with yours truly, Dr. Joyelle. I am Dr. Joyelle, the Menopause Mogul, board certified OBGYN and business coach for Black women 40 and over. And my mission is to educate, embolden, and empower Black women and other women of color in their journey through health and careers. This is a space for Black women and other women of color to share their compelling trials and tribulations in their health and or in their careers and businesses. This is where we recognize the humanity of Black women and show how Black women continue to elevate despite midlife challenges and changes. Hello, hello. Welcome back to another episode of Menopause Moguls. Hey, y'all. So today I wanted to talk about your inner critic, your inner critic and how your inner critic is a liar. And this came up, I, I'm recording this, uh, the November 1st day after Halloween and me and my girls just did a salt and pepper video on TikTok with my son in the background, my husband in the background, and it went viral. <laughs> if you don't follow me on TikTok, go follow me, go look at the video. It's uh same handle as IG, Dr. Joyelle. Um, it is hilarious. It was so much fun. Um, and it was very appropriate for me to talk about inner critics after doing a video like that because it made me remember in the beginning when I used to do videos with my girls, if you haven't been following me, y'all know that I am pretty much, you know, frequently doing videos with my, my two girls. They are 10 and 12. They love doing it. I love doing it. Uh, but in the beginning, I would just you know, we would do these videos and I would have us do it over and over and over again. It had to be perfect. And I realized how I was projecting that perfectionism onto them, which was not a good thing. Right. And, um, and over time I have learned to, you know, we'll do it a couple of times and then we'll, we get what we get and we put, we'll put, we'll put it out there. Uh, and that's exactly what happened yesterday when we did our Halloween video. Um, we, <laughs> we practiced like twice and the third time, like, all right, that's it. And you know, we were also, we were pressed for time too. We had to go trick or treating. <laughs> So we're gonna do this video and uh, you know go trick or treating. So, but it was so much fun. Um, but it again reminded me of how our inner critic can just be liars. And just thinking back in the beginning of my journey um, with even writing my book and then building my business, my inner critic was so 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 loud. And with writing my book and then then marketing my book, right? If you don't know, I have a book called Loving Me, Myself, and Her Through Perimenopause and Beyond. And before writing my book, I I was not on social media. Like, no. I was on Facebook and that was it. And I hardly posted. Like every every time something was posted, my husband posted it and he tagged me. And I remember when I was working in the hospital, the nurse would be like, Dr. Ballard, like, why are you not posting any videos of the kids? All we see videos, I mean, all, any pictures of the kids, all we see is what your husband posts. I'm like, well, that's what y'all gonna get because I don't, I'm not on social media. But as, you know, someone who's now trying to get this book out there and tell people I'm writing this book and now want to sell this book, I had to get on social media, right? That is the... A uh, place that we could actually have, uh, you know, free reigns of, you know, marketing what we're offering, whether it's a book, whether it's our business, our services. So I had to get on social media. And I remember preparing for live videos. I would just write out all the things that I wanted to talk about in regards to menopause and it was pages of stuff and I would memorize it. I would memorize it and then get on the live. Now, before even touching the live button, I would look at the live button for like, I don't know, five minutes before 
<laughs> before I press things. I'm like, I don't want to go on live, people. Again, this is the talk that I was, you know, the stuff that I was telling myself. People are going to think like, what are you talking about? You sound stupid. Like, that don't even make sense. So I had to like, you know, eventually press the live button and go live. But I will memorize everything. I memorize all the content that I need to memorize for my lives. Um, and then I started speaking on, you know, whether it was in person or virtually, I would memorize that content. And as I was then getting into entrepreneurship and building my business, I remember my coach, we were actually, this actually happened. I was actually on kind of like a mini retreat with her and she was coaching me on some things in regards to my uh, business and, you know, just messaging and things like that. And we, at the same time, we both was going to present in a virtual conference and she saw me preparing and she was like, okay. And I was like, all right, I need to memorize what I, she was like, memorize, what are you memorizing? I'm like, I'm memorizing my, my talk. And she was like, what are you doing? She's like, you've been memorizing everything? I'm like, yeah. She was like, you were memorizing like the stuff that you're doing for your, all those live videos you've been doing? You've been, you been memorizing that stuff? <laughs> I was like, uh, yeah. She was like, um, who told you to do that? And I said, uh, me? She was like, why are you stressing yourself out? I'm like, uh, I thought that's what I had to do. <laughs> My inner critic was telling me, you need to memorize this stuff because that's when people, they're going to think that you know your stuff and that's what experts do. They memorize all the things that they want to say and you can't have any notes. You can't read off of anything like you have to memorize it lies all lies right but i did it like so much memorized i had to memorize it. It, had, it had to be perfect and she made me realize that this inner critic was a liar and i didn't have to do any of that stuff and and i was like oh okay and when she made me realize that and I started doing live videos, you know, without like, obviously I would write out an outline and, and notes and things like that. But when I gave myself permission to use my notes, <laughs> I had to do that too. Give myself a permission to use those notes. It was such a relief. Like it wasn't as stressful as it was in the beginning. And just imagine trying to memorize all these things with brain fog and memory lapses. I don't know, that may sound familiar to someone, but I'm like, why were you stressing your, your midlife brain? <laughs> trying to memorize all these things, putting all that pressure on myself, right? But that is what we do, right? We have these inner, we have this inner critic that is telling us all these things that are completely lies. And this is how we stress ourselves out as we're trying to do thing, do big things like building a business or pivot in our career or write a book, things like that. This is what stops us. This is what keeps us stuck. This is what stresses us out. This is what makes us feel overwhelmed because this inner critic is saying all this stuff to us, which are lies, but we're listening to it. And, and it's not allowing us to move either as fast or make as much progress as we would like because of it. So I had to learn to shift my, my listening ear to my inner coach instead of my inner critic. Basically make my inner coach louder than my inner critic. But it is, it has been a muscle in the whole process. Um, remembering another time, again, with my coach, I was feeling overwhelmed. 
I don't remember what the actual thing was happening at that time, you know, in the, in the process of building my business, just a lot of emotions and, um, negative thoughts, you know, I can't do it. This is too much. And all these things. And I remember her telling me, you need to just scream, like go to a room and just scream in your house. Like, cause she knew I was home, you know, when I must drop the kids off, I'm home by myself. I'm like, okay, I'll do that. So I did, I had a moment where I was just filled with emotion and just wanted to cry out. And I screamed. And in the middle of the scream, I was like, the thought was, you sound stupid. (laughs) What are you doing? Why are you screaming? What are you doing? the inner critic was hello I'm here I'm still here I'm still here but in the also in the moment I'm like okay there you are again there you are trying to just bring a sister down even more (laughs) right I recognize the inner critic and um and realized again I had to continue to build the relationship that I have with myself because I was already in that process of doing that as I was going through my perimenopause journey you know relationship with myself being um, more compassionate to myself being more kind giving myself more grace I was I was building that I, I I was building that in my perimenopause journey and I had to build that even more in this entrepreneur journey because because of so many ebbs and flows that go along with building a business I realized that relationship that I have with myself had to be even more optimized right and again I had to make my inner coach louder than my inner critic because especially in these midlife years, these in, this inner critic, it's also feeding you information from things that you have kind of internalized as a little girl, um, internalized from previous experiences. And it the inner critic is just rooted in fear, right? Rooted in, you know, fear that whatever you, the big thing that you want to do, it's, it may not work out. You may fail. You may build a business that the people won't come. You know, all the things that an inner critic can tell us. And in building the relationship with myself even more, um, that involving me actually knowing more about myself, right? Actually acknowledging the inner critic because in the beginning, I didn't really even acknowledge the inner critic. I didn't even like... Um, know that I was criticizing myself, but that was actually even a problem, if that makes sense. Um, it was just, you know, I would just hear my, hear this critic saying like, oh, you can't do this. Oh, you sound stupid. Oh, people are going to think that you are this or you are that. And I just try to, you know, just kind of gloss over it and not really acknowledge it. But the relationship that I have with myself, you know, now, you know, building up to this point, I realized that, you know, now I actually can decipher the inner critic versus the truth, right? The inner critic is telling me all these lies and I can't do this. I can't do that. Or that won't work. This won't work. All the things that, again, when we're doing something big, we're doing something that something new, doing something that we've never done before the inner critic can certainly just speak all of these lies to us. And when we're also in the midst of going through, going through internal changes that involve brain fog and hot flashes that makes us feel embarrassed, makes us feel like we can't do it, makes us feel inadequate. That inner critic sounds like the truth. Like, oh yeah, you can do it. You can't, mm-mm, you got brain fog and you can't remember nothing. Like, mm-mm, you can't, can't do it. You can't do it. So in building a relationship with my, with the, having, you know, the relationship that I have with myself in order to actually know and recognize the inner critic and then, you know, shifting that, uh, that talk that I have with myself 
and realize that, okay, that's a lie. That's not true. Now, let's, let's talk about what the truth is, right? Let's talk about what the truth is, right? And um, calling the inner critic out, like, I, I, I see you. Mm-hmm. I see you. I see you. Um, and then in turn, giving myself grace, having more compassion with myself in, 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 in the process, being able to continue to move forward in all the things that I'm, you know, that I was doing, um, within, you know, building my business. So the inner critic can just be loud in a lot of situations, even with, I was just talking to a friend the other day and, you know, in her fifties going through some hot flashes, some emotional, um, changes. And she started to do things that were pouring into her, like, you know, go s sit in, in, in a back room in her house, just by herself and just, you know, be with herself or just go out and do something just by herself. And her inner critic was like, you can't do that. Like, what are you doing? You gotta be doing something. There's laundry to do. There's your kids want you like all the things. Right. And, um, just like I'm sharing with you, I was sharing with her, like we have to change the relationship that we have with ourselves, that we are able to, um, recognize that inner critic, but, and also, and then shift, um, the way we're talking to ourselves and shift the way that we're treating ourselves um, and giving ourselves grace throughout whatever process that we are doing, whatever thing that we're doing um, and embracing and listening more to our inner coach. And our inner coach is rooted in keeping us or making us feel whole and healed and um also just given us the, um, the ability and the capacity to do all the things that we want to do, even those big, scary things. So just thinking about how do we keep our inner, inner critic quiet, um, and, or keep our, and then maintain our inner coach to be the loudest voice, you know, in, in the process and just thinking about, you know, those stories and, um, you know, again, that all the things that as I'm going through again, just more transitions, right. I've learned that the, you know, going back to this viral video I do with my girls, like, you know, we, like I said, we did it. We practiced twice and just put it out there. And that was it. And I remember just back in the day, it was like, we got to do it again. 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 And I'm like, yeah, no, we don't have time. We're not doing it. We don't need to. We don't need to. Because also when you're allowing, are you, are you letting yourself listen more to your inner coach? You also let go of what other, caring about what other people think, caring about what other people say. Um, and again, just, moving forward and doing the things that you want to do, doing the things that you're being called to do. So shifting from your listening to your inner critic and shifting from that and then listening to your inner coach, you have to do the inner work, right? And, and this is what I talk to my clients about in regards to um, self-discovery, self-awareness, um, the self-compassion, self-care, obviously, right? Again, just being intentional about pouring into ourselves. Um, and the three things that we have to do to make that shift is number one, again, change the relationship that we have with ourselves, with doing that inner work, knowing ourselves, calling ourselves out, being honest, um, and then trusting ourselves, right? Number two, um, celebrating ourselves, celebrating our wins, the smallest wins, the big wins, all the wins. Um, because I think when you, when we do that, that again, keeps us connected more to our inner coach, to our higher self. And we keep going. We're allowed to, we, we, we 
are more able to um, make more progress, right? Um, we embrace the progress that we've, we've done. Because I, re again, just going back with, with me and, um, I remember, you know, once my book was out and then I started doing other things, someone asked me, Oh, what do you do? What? And, and I remember someone's like, don't you have a book? And I'm like, Oh yeah, I have a book. <laughs> oh yeah. Right. Like we have to embrace all the things that we've done. Right. And, 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 and internalize it and, um, celebrate it and, recognize the progress that you've made from, you know, from the beginning, you know, from where you started to till today. Right. And even though there are definitely some mistakes you've made, some decisions you wish you, you make, you, you wish you've never made, or, you know, you, you didn't make, or, um, quote unquote failures, things that didn't work out like you, you, you wanted to, you still learn from those things, but again, you also still have these wins that we don't put on a pedestal like we should, right? Like, especially as we are getting into these midlife years and trying to do um, other things, um, we discount all the things that we've we've done. We discount the wisdom that we've learned from that, and we have to kind of shift that and be more celebratory of what we've done so far up until this point. Um, and then number three would be just connecting, being intentional about connecting to our higher selves. Our higher self is that connection with our spirit, our soul, our heart, which is, you know, what our, you know, God wants us to do, right? He wants us to follow that as opposed to our uh, personality or ego self, which the ego is, as you know, is layered in limiting beliefs and self-doubt and all the things. So instead of, and obviously your inner critic, right? So instead of leading with that, being more led by our, um, our higher selves and um, connecting with that, which is, you know, connected to the, our, our authentic selves and who we are truly designed to be. Once we do those things, we can, we're able to listen more or the inner coach is louder than our inner critic and we're able to do things <laughs> that we want to do, whether again, whether it's building the business, writing the book, um, pivoting your career, whatever that thing is, you're able to do that when your um, inner critic becomes quieter because it doesn't go away, right? Like let, let me just say that the inner critic does not go away. Um, but we can certainly make it less relevant, um, make it, uh, something that again, that we certainly will be able to acknowledge and see it, but also continue to move and take steps that we want to take when we're, when we're doing things, doing big things, um, in these, in these, um, in these midlife streets. So, so I wanted to share that because again, it, it is a, kind of a part of, not a kind of, it is a, a part of my journey, just looking at myself from the beginning where, when I used to do live videos, when I used to do these podcast episodes, um, in the beginning, I would criticize. I would like, Oh my gosh, I got to record that again. If it was a podcast episode, if it was a live, I would get off the live and be like, them people didn't know what she was talking about, girl. <laughs> they didn't know what you, what, what were you saying for real? Did they really get it? Like y'all it's just, just be again, lying, just a liar, just a liar. <laughs> And now I am 
able to record these episodes now on video because you know that's that's that was also a transition for me right like it was just audio so i could be up in here with my, with my bonnet on recording a video <laughs> I used to record, record podcast video podcast episodes at like 5 a.m. before the kids got up and my voice was all raspy and stuff and and again remember like girl you sound like you just woke up which I did but you know but that is going through my brain as I'm trying to record a podcast episode then I will listen to it I'm like yeah you do sound and again it, it, this cycle it's just a vicious cycle it just goes over and over again it just kind of it can keep you stuck it can keep you like okay you probably shouldn't just don't record any more episodes. Just, just stop doing it, <laughs> right? It can totally talk you out of what you are being called to do because the critic is so loud. It is so, so, so loud. But again, like I said, you can make it quieter. You can make her quieter. You can make her um, kind of fall back. If you, number one, change the relationship that you have with yourself. Number two, celebrate all of your wins, not just the big ones, every last bit of it, every win. And and number three, being intentional about connecting with yourself. And with that, that definitely requires you to sit still. Um, I would say sit, sitting still in silence just sitting with yourself, breathing. If you want to do breath work, you can do that. If you want to meditate, you can do that too. But we just have to be intentional about just sitting with ourselves. And I know for me, that was so hard for me because when you are so used to just going, going, going and doing, 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 sitting and not doing nothing, yeah, my inner critic was like, what you doing, girl? I'm like, you, you, got, you got stuff to do. What are, what are you doing? You got, you got laundry. You got uh, dishes. You gotta do this for the kids. You gotta do this for the business. Like all this stuff, and it's like you are allowed to just sit and be still and just you know feel. Just you can just sit and feel what's in your body if you're and you know especially with me as I'm going through this uh temporary long COVID it it I still have you know I still take the time to just sit still just be still and do nothing feel my body you know there's aches and pains like, okay what's that and get curious with yourself like what is that where where's that from um you know did I I didn't stretch enough. I did. Did I stretch at all? You know, all the things that you you know we can all these questions we can ask ourselves. Um, but at the same time, asking those questions um, without judgment, right? And again, allowing that inner critic to come back in, like, yeah, this is why you having that pain because you didn't stretch like you were supposed to, like you like you said you was going to do last night. Like the inner critic be showing up all the damn time. <laughs> All the time so it is a muscle to, uh, to to make your inner coach your inner coach who wants to see you win um, it is a muscle to make the inner coach louder so you can do all the amazing things that you want to do so that's what I want to leave y'all with <laughs> All right, so let me know what you think. If you are watching on YouTube, let me know in the comments. If you are listening to one of the uh, Apple, you know, podcast listening app or any of the listening um, apps, write a review. Let me know. I want to know what y'all think. Or y'all can also send me a message on Instagram. Yeah, definitely, I'm open to that too. I want to know what y'all think. What's y'all? What's your inner critic, inner critic telling you? What is she telling you? That's what I want to know. What is she telling you? Let me know. Let me know in the comments, in a review, in an IG DM. Let me know what your inner critic's telling you because I am here to tell you or remind you that your inner critic is a liar, and I want you to embrace your inner coach. So you can do all the amazing things that you are being called to do. All right. 
All right, y'all. Again, as always, sending love and light. And I will see, I will see y'all. Talk to y'all next time. All right, y'all. Take care.